Okay, now that we kind of wore out the section, probably told you more than I needed to on increasing and decreasing functions, let me show you what it leads to. Before, before we get to that, it, it actually leads to what's called relative extrema, but let's define what relative extrema are. Okay, let's say f of c is actually, this is the y value, f of c is actually called a relative max if there is an interval on a b that contains c such that f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all x in a b now i know that's a mouthful but here's all it means this is all it means right here okay whoops all right so so this little point right here at the top, right there, that little point right there, this point right here is actually called a relative maximum because in this neighborhood, this is the highest value. Now this function could continue on and do, you know, other stuff. You know, it could go up here and do all kinds of stuff. But the point is, in this neighborhood, in this little neighborhood, this value is higher than any other uh, functional values, any other y values. So this is the highest y value in its neighborhood. So this is called a relative maximum. Now, the next one tells you, well, just the other, just the opposite. f of c is a relative minimum of f if there exists an interval about c such that f of x is greater than or equal to f of c. So in other words, f of c is going to be the smallest value in the neighborhood. So for instance, you might have a graph that, you know, comes down here, turns around, and then does all kinds of weird stuff. But this point right here, that's a low point, okay? Not like a low point in your life, though, but that's a low point. Notice that if you look, say, from here to here, that point is lower than all the points in this interval from here to here. Okay? Now, it's, it's not the lowest point. It may not be the very lowest point on the graph, but in this neighborhood, it's a low point. And so, basically, a graph can have... It actually can have multiple relative extrema and relative, I mean, relative maxima and relative minima. So, for instance, here we have a relative minimum. But if you go up here, notice that this point up here is the highest point in its neighborhood. And then if you go down here, this point is the lowest point in its neighborhood. So, basically, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about relative maximum or relative minimum. Now, a little bit later, I'll talk to you about absolute extrema, but I don't want to get into that right now. But let me just say, if you had a graph that actually had a definite starting point and a definite stopping point, um, okay, this graph would have an absolute minimum. This, this point right here would be the lowest point on the graph, and that's what we would call an absolute minimum. And this point right here would be the highest point on the graph, so that would be the absolute maximum. We'll talk more about those later. But right now, let's focus on the relative extrema. Now, for plural, it, they just end in A. But for singular, they end in UM. Like, if you, have, if you want to talk about plural relative maximums, you say maxima. If you want to talk about plural, plural relative extrema, you say, ex, you say, I mean, sorry, plural, you say extrema. For a singular, you say extremum. So anyway, um, that's the, the notation that we use or the, the dialogue we use when we're talking about extrema. Okay, now, here's a graph, and notice that this point here is the largest value, say, in this neighborhood from here to here. So, so this would be a relative maximum. And then this point is the lowest value, say, in this neighborhood from here to here. So that would be 
the, a relative minimum. And so, so this is a relative maximum. This is a relative minimum. Now, when you're identifying maximum and minimum, the actual maximum and minimum are the y values. So even though the point is 2, 3, 3 is the relative maximum. That's important to remember. And this point here, 6, negative 2, negative 2 is the relative minimum. Now, the x value is just where they occur. So the maximum, the relative maximum occurs at x equal 2, and the relative minimum occurs at x equals 6. Now, sometimes I'll refer to these as peaks and valleys. So, like a, a relative maximum is a peak, and a relative minimum is a valley. So, that way, you know, I can differentiate between the two. Now, the only way that you can have relative extrema, you, you can only have relative extrema at a critical number. So, the only way that you can get a relative extrema is at a critical value. Now, if you'll remember, critical values occur uh, either when the derivative is zero. Now, let's talk about that. There's two ways that they can occur. If the derivative is zero, they can occur. So, when would the derivative of a function be zero over an interval? Well, if a function went up and then kind of slowly turned around, then at some point you would actually have you would actually have a horizontal tangent line right there. So pretend like that line is horizontal. It's a little bit off. All right. So at that, at that peak right there, you would actually have a horizontal tangent line. So in other words, the derivative would be zero. Or it, it could go the other way. Maybe the graph does this. Well, then... Um, you would have a horizontal tangent line down here at this valley. So, so the only time that you could get a relative maximum or a relative minimum, there's two ways, and, and that's if you get a horizontal tangent line. But what does it mean to have a horizontal tangent line? It simply means that the derivative of the function is zero. So you have to find where the derivative is zero, the critical number, right? Okay, now there's another way that you could have a uh, maximum or minimum, all right? This one's less common, but we did see it in some earlier graphs. Okay, so, so one way that you could have a relative maximum is if you get a sharp point like this. So right here, you get a relative maximum. Okay, well, the derivative of this function at this point would be undefined, right? Because the derivative is not defined at sharp corners. So there we would have a relative maximum. Now, to get a relative minimum, let me see if I can do this freehanded. Okay, so here is a point that's a relative minimum. So it's a little bit different from the way this one's shaped, but the point is is that still a sharp turn right there? So, so the derivative would be undefined here. For on this graph, the derivative would be undefined. So that's the other way that you can get uh, relative extrema. Now, you don't have to have relative extrema though. Okay, let me show you an example of one where the derivative would be undefined, but you don't, you wouldn't get a relative extrema. All right, something like this. Okay, so let's say that right here at this point, um, you get a vertical tangent line. Well, that would mean the derivative would be undefined at this point. But notice you don't get a relative maximum or relative minimum here. Okay, so what I'm saying is in order for a relative extrema, if a relative extrema does exist, it, it must occur at a critical number. But I'm not saying the converse of that. Just because you have a, a critical number doesn't mean you're going to have a relative extrema. So basically, we have to t test the relative extrema uh, using some type of test. Okay, here's three examples here. Um, 
that I've given you. So right here, the first example right here, you have extrema at three and you, you have a relative minimum at three and uh, you know, you got a horizontal tangent line. Here, you've got a relative minimum at three and you've got a horizontal tangent line. I mean, I'm sorry, not a horizontal. You have the derivative is, excuse me, is undefined. Here, now this one I haven't shown you this one yet, but here notice how this function, it flattens out right here at three. So right here, the derivative would be zero, but notice it didn't turn around like you might think it ought to. It actually continues going, it continues increasing. So, so anyway, if you have critical numbers, if you find the critical numbers, those critical numbers, you can determine if you're going to get a relative extreme or not. So notice, let, let me show you where this next test I'm going to talk about comes from. We're going to see a test called the first derivative test. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, find the critical numbers. So let's say I find 3 is a critical number. Well, then I'm going to test to the left of 3. If I test this function to the left of 3, I'll find that the derivative is negative because the function is decreasing. And then on the right of 3, I'll find that the derivative is positive, so the function is increasing. So if you find at a critical number that the function is decreasing to the left, or the derivative is negative to the left and positive to the right, then you get a relative minimum. All right, let's look at this one. If I tested this one, okay, what would the derivative be to the left of 3? Well, the function's decreasing. And then to the right of 3, so the derivative would be negative. To the right of 3, the function is increasing, so the derivative is positive. So that, again, the derivative to the left would be negative, and the derivative to the right would be positive. So we would get a uh, relative minimum again. Okay. Now, real quick, let me show you what if it was doing this. Okay. Well, then, if this is x equal 3, well, to the left, the derivative would be positive. To the right, the derivative would be negative, so I'd get a relative maximum there. Okay? So, in other words, um, well, we'll see the first derivative test in a minute. Now, if there's no change, like right here, if you, test, if you tested this function, if you, if you evaluated the derivative at a number on this side, you'd find that the derivative is positive to the left of 3, and then you would also find it's positive to the right of 3, so there's no change in the sign of the derivative, so therefore you would not get a, a, an extrema there. So you wouldn't get an extreme value there, okay? And so this leads us to the first derivative test. And so I'm going to pick up with the first derivative test in the next video.